Hi, I'm Katie Couric. Welcome to Eye to Eye. Actor and comedian Steve Martin walked away from his stand-up career more than 20 years ago, and he says he hasn't looked back until now. He spoke to Rita Braver for CBS News Sunday Morning about his new book, which focuses on his early years as a stand-up comic. What just made you decide to write a book about your stand-up well, career? It was such an uh, important part of my life, for one thing. Uh, but like I say in the book, when I moved on, I never looked back. And I, and I had thought about writing something about my life or a memoir of some kind, because I had dabbled with it, I'd written a few pieces for The New Yorker, and, and I liked it, and I thought, maybe I better write this now before I don't remember anything. <laughs> and, um, I, and I realized that this, I didn't want to write about the rest of my career, the movies or, or writing or anything like that, because it doesn't really have an ending, but my stand-up career had an ending. You said that you sort of found the, I think you said the core, the primordial core of your act here? My act was eclectic, and I was looking for time, really, to fill. And so I just threw in everything I knew. I could play, I could play the banjo, I did my magic act. I, uh, what else did I do? I juggled. Uh, I was doing all those things, just to really get enough time to have a show. I guess at some point along the way you decided that you didn't want to do jokes? I, I was studying philosophy in college and, I, and philosophy taught me question everything. And so I just turned it on my act, I, or turned that thought rather than toward metaphysics, I turned it on my comedy it's act. <laughs> and I started thinking, what, what can I bend and break? Um, so. And, and I was really trying to break away the, from the form that was really 50s form of, of just joke telling. One, one would be anecdotal joke telling, you know, like two guys go into a bar, uh, or, and others would be, you know, comedy routines, but they always had punchlines, and I thought, and I, and I thought that, well, the audience is just, they're, they're sitting there waiting for these punchlines, and then a punchline comes, and they go, ha ha ha. <laughs> but it's not really real. They're kind of being told when to laugh. And I thought, what if I never indicated to them where to laugh? Then they would sit there for a while, and pretty soon they would, I hoped, find their own place to laugh. And then they would be laughing for real. One of the great photos in the book shows you wearing a banana on your head. What did you do? Well, I had gotten a really bad review. I was working in the Troubadour opening for Linda Ronstadt and uh, the writer said, this is like 1970, the writer said uh, he does little to make you remember him or his material. So I closed my show by taking out five bananas and I peeled one and put it on my head and, and put one out of each pocket and one somewhere else and then I held the two in my hand and squeezed them and then I read the review and I said good night. <laughs> They remembered you. <laughs> what finally happened? What made you decide that stand-up was over for you? Basically, I was just exhausted. And I could not create a new act. I'd, I'd been doing it for 18 years. And I knew I couldn't go back and start over. Um, and I had this opportunity in movies. And I saw that that would be a better life than touring around, traveling around. And I had, just, I had done it. I couldn't top myself. And you walked out one night, and you say you just never looked back yeah. until I now. I packed <laughs> up my things and uh, all my little magic props and put my banjo away and, uh, and went home. <laughs> it has been an incredible journey. You know, I wish someone had told me uh, in 1979, when I was, or 1980, when I was quitting stand-up that say, don't worry, everything's going to be all right. <laughs> I would have been much happier. <laughs>